Hello, hello, and welcome to yet another episode of our Texans podcast. Remember, if you listened to the first episode we did, I said we are doing a series talking to fellows from the Legatum Center of Entrepreneurship, MIT. And this is the second episode we are doing. So thank you so much, AC, for joining us. A so just a good starting point where we're just introducing yourself and tell us who you are and what you do. Okay, I'm S.C. Owe. I'm from Nigeria. I am a healthcare entrepreneur mm-hmm. and um, an impact investor. Uh, and I'm a member of the 2024-25 cohort mm-hmm. of the Foundry Fellowship. And um, my new venture is the African International Kidney Care Network, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, which seeks to democratize access um, to renal dialysis and kidney care mm-hmm. uh, in Africa. Right. I mean, that's a very interesting space you are in. You know, Just talk to us. Why that space? Well, it's both personal mm-hmm. uh, and and also um, driven by my interest in public health. Yeah. On the personal side, I, I, I grew up you know, in a family where two of my siblings had um, congenital health care issues. Oh, okay. And I saw firsthand the mm-hmm. difficulties in navigating the healthcare space um, in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. And um, even though I'm a trained lawyer, yeah. mm-hmm. I made a vow to myself to impact that space. Um, but on the public um, health side of things, you tend to find that between the, the, the CKD prevalence, that's the um, chronic kidney disease prevalence in Africa, mm-hmm. is anywhere between 11.5 and 13.5. Yeah. Um, while the average in Europe is about 4.5%. So you can see that the, the burden is quite high. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, we don't have um, enough yeah. kidney care centers mm-hmm. anywhere in Africa. Yes, South Africa is all right, Egypt is all right, but on the average, in sub-Saharan Africa, yeah. where you have a prevalence of about 11,000 per 100,000, mm-hmm. you tend to find that that is not in existence. Mm-hmm. People go on, so you find that for those who suffer from CKD, um, they die within six to nine months of mm-hmm. commencement of treatment. Mm-hmm. So we felt that there was a need to democratize, democratize access to that you know, therapeutic care yeah. within mm-hmm. the ecosystem. Mm-hmm. And then what we are doing is leveraging AI and machine learning okay. to provide remote consultations and you know, deliver an outcomes-based model right. that enables us to provide them remote consultations, data-driven insights, mm-hmm. uh, remote ICU capabilities, and then, you know, positively disrupt the, mm. the, the, the ecosystem. All right. You know, you mentioned about the uh, the lack of enough care centers. I think it's also one of the biggest presidential experiences even in Kenya here, actually. You know, there's always a big channel about the available care centers. Even the ones that are there, there are enough to enough take care of the already existing patients, actually. And for your case, you know, we are building this product using very interesting things. Of course, AI, as you mentioned, everything. Just talk about how you're leveraging AI and also this, like, all these other technologies to actually build this product. So what we are doing with AI is to actually improve the process. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, as you would know, um, for renal care in Africa, the first major problem is the quality of care. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't have you know, cutting edge dial- dialysis machines. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't have predictive analytics. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what we want to do with AI is first, is first on the prevention side, mm-hmm. to use AI to develop models that people can use to actually check their predisposition to yeah. diabetes mm-hmm. and, you know, chronic, I mean, kidney failure in the long term, high blood pressure and all of that stuff. So AI first would help us to build a community yeah. um, of people who want to use, you know, technology and advanced um, uh, diagnostics to check whether or not they will suffer CKD in the future. Mm-hmm. So we don't want to wait for them to have cr- chronic yeah. kidney failure mm-hmm. before they begin to use our systems. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then within the context of um, provisioning. Yeah. We'll then use AI to do data analytics, to do remote consultations, you know, to provide data-driven insights mm-hmm. and also give patients at home a platform to actually interface. Mm-hmm. Give doctors and physicians a platform, an AI-driven platform to, you know, to speak to the patient. And most importantly for us is the fact that one of the most common comorbidities yeah. um, within the context of kidney failure mm-hmm. is heart failure. Mm-hmm. So we are, we've built a system where we have, you know, re- digital ICUs, where doctors can provide cardiovascular, yeah. you know, support mm-hmm. to patients undergoing dialysis, so that that way, when they have heart problems or heart conditions, yeah. mm-hmm. we can give that level of care using AI and machine learning to 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 give predictive analytics. Well, maybe what would you say is actually the biggest challenge you face when as a founder, and of course, just going out through this entire journey of building, you know, this venture 
what do you say are some of the biggest challenges you faced? Uh, well, the found that the first challenge is access to finance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the second is infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So that for us, for instance, because I'm also active in the clean energy space, we are trying to build a sustainable business mm -hmm. using clean energy. We would integrate solar energy into all our facilities. Mm -hmm. The main problem is infrastructure. So for, for a dialysis system, um, center, you need power 24 hours. Mm -hmm. The cost of diesel in Nigeria today is, I think, over a thousand naira a liter. Yeah. Yeah. So the point, what we are trying to do is that we want to ensure that we have the best financial model mm -hmm. that gives us the best cost of capital mm -hmm. so that we don't overburden yeah. patients with high cost of access. Oh, interesting. So you've been in Nairobi for like a week, I hear, six days. Yeah. And I know you visit so many places, innovation centers, you know. What have you learned? What have you picked? Um, first thing I like about Nairobi is the to-do spirit. Yeah. yeah um, we've seen firsthand how and why Nairobi is regarded as a Silicon Valley yeah. of Eastern Africa mm -hmm. and a leading tech ecosystem yeah. in Africa. Um, so one of the things we've picked from here is the mindset and strategy for incubating yeah. innovative um, and innovative technologies, mm -hmm. and also for scaling innovation-driven ent enterprises. So, like like what we are doing in Nigeria as a pilot, our plan is to have a pan-African network mm -hmm. of kidney care centers, and mm -hmm. we hope that by the grace of God, in the next twenty-four yeah. months, we should have have something here in Nairobi. All right, and of course, I know you came here courtesy of the Legaton Fellowship Program. What really made you join the program? So for me, what I was looking for was an opportunity to have a real life, practical, pair to pair engagement mm -hmm. with colleagues within the ecosystem yeah. who were who are at an inflection point in the entrepreneurship journey. Mm -hmm. um, I've gone to, I've been to the Harvard Kennedy School, I've yep. been to the State Business School, mm -hmm. I've been to all of these places for executive education. Um, for me, the fellowship was different. Mm -hmm. This is an immersive, practical fellowship led by the MIT faculty um, at the Sloan School and Legaton Center. And what we've learned is that you have 15 founders yeah. at various stages of incubation and development, sharing real life experiences, sharing practical challenges and sharing pathways for overcoming these challenges. So mm -hmm. it's a life changing you know, experience. It's been absolutely fantastic. Some of us are sad that we have to leave tomorrow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we thank um, the Legatum Center. Mm -hmm. We thank Dina. We thank Jennifer. Uh, we thank Jackie. We thank um, Felicia and all the members of the team behind yeah. the scenes, Donovan, that have put this together. And um, like I told them when we were being interviewed, it's a transformative yeah. opportunity for all of us. And we've learned a whole lot on how to become ecosystem builders, how to become innovative founders, and how to actually leverage finance. Right, and even just as we come to an end, you know, of course, you're in the health tech space, you know, for anyone looking to venture into that space, you know, what, what is advice what really have for them? I would tell them that you must understand your local environment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, for any infrastructure project, you cannot have the helicopter approach. You must put your boots on the ground. You must understand the regulatory landscape. You must understand the public health landscape. You must understand how, how technology interfaces with health mm -hmm. and whether or not a particular technology is suitable for that geography. Because there's a culture of tech of, of technology, yeah. right? So different jurisdictions have different approaches to technology. So yeah. you must understand what technology is, you know, favorable in your local space. And for us, we are a Pan African company. We try to, inc I mean, incorporate all the local peculiarities, local regulatory requirements, and most importantly, leveraging our experience uh, in the broader healthcare space to provide innovative and um, data-driven uh, solutions. All right. Thank you so much, Essie. Any any so, closing remarks? Um, just to say we thank um, the MIT team um, for this opportunity. And we know we have about two or three more of these ecosystem visits to yeah. go. Mm -hmm. I'm very confident that by the end of this fellowship, I would not be the man I was yeah. when I commenced um, mm -hmm. about a week ago. It's okay. been an absolutely amazing experience. All right. And I encourage um, entrepreneurs and founders who meet the criteria mm -hmm. to actually look for, I mean, look for an opportunity to apply next year. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, Essie. Thanks. Of course, we look, forward, we look forward to actually following what you're doing, reading more and just trying to see, you know, you know, you know, for 
people in our space, how more we can just amplify the things you're building and how that is definitely helping just grow the health tech space in Africa, which of course is a very big space. And it needs people like you are building these very interesting products which will help scale. And of course, just help local problems, solve local problems and help the local community. So thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much.